Hi. Today we've got some PCBs back from PCB Way. These are the LED drivers that we designed in a previous video. So let's take a closer look at what we've got in the box. So we've got the PCBs that we designed. We've also got the stencil just enclosed by these bits of MDF. And then we've got some bits of merchandise. And these PCB rulers are an example of some of PCB Way's new advanced PCBs, which highlight some of the new colors that are available. So this is a kind of yellow color. We've got a matte black, which I think is the same as the matte black that we've seen before from PCB Way. And we've got this really nice gray color. We've got a clear solder mask. So this is just the FR4 material that you can see with a clear uh, solder mask that's over the top, uh, obviously with the pads exposed. But this means that you could route a really fancy looking PCB uh, with all the traces exposed, uh, but protected by a clear solder mask. So that one's quite nice. Uh, and then we've got a white, a pink, and I think the purple is the same as before. So to order these types of PCBs, rather than standard PCB, we need to click on Advanced PCB. And you'll notice there's a whole range of additional options available compared to the low-cost standard PCBs, uh, including the board specification. But also look at the ridiculous number of layers that's possible when you select Advanced PCB, all the way up to 60 layer board. Uh, and then as you can see, we've got these additional options for colors, pink, gray, orange, and transparent. And also a different color silk screen. So normally we've only got black and white, but you can also pick yellow, blue, and gray, which can be handy in certain circumstances. So here are the PCBs that we designed in that recent video. Now this is just a standard PCB. I didn't use the advanced PCB options. Uh, so this is just plain green, but with the Enig finish. And as you can see, that's looking really, really nice. So what we're going to do today is we're going to assemble up this PCB and then test it under load and have a look at the various waveforms at various parts in the schematic to make sure that our gate driver electronics is doing as we expect. So the assembly there was pretty straightforward and we've come out with a really nice, neat looking PCB. I think it looks really quite smart. And it's plugged into my main board that I use for the firmware development on these things. And previously it had uh, one of these RGB LED drivers in it. And this was a, a very simple module designed only to drive a couple of hundred milliamps into some LED strips. So uh, we've still got three MOSFETs on the output here, but this was driven pretty much directly by the microcontroller because we weren't worried too much about the losses uh, as we saw with the leds that we're driving with this board we've got a much higher load and so we potentially do need all of the gate drivers and all the extra electronics associated with that so um i've programmed it with the well i've, I've put the same id resistors on this board because it's driven in exactly the same way and it could be used to drive a very powerful rgb led strip um so the Mainboard has picked that up 
as the same PCB and is happy to drive it with the PWM waveform on those three pins. So what we want to do now is load up the output and have a look at the waveforms on the PCB and just see what's going on at various parts in the circuit uh, just to verify that everything's working as expected. Now I think what I'll probably do first of all is put a power resistor on one of the channels. Um, I could connect it up to the DC load but I don't know how the DC load responds to a PWM waveform at a couple of hundred hertz whether it will respond properly or not. So a resistor is a nice easy way first of all to see what's going on then we can try the DC load and see what happens but my concern is we might see loads of artifacts uh, if the DC load isn't fast enough to respond. So let's connect a resistor up and we'll use the picoscope to have a look at the various points on the PCB. Okay so we've got our PCB set up here with a 12 ohm resistor, this is a large power resistor connected to the output of channel 1 and the LED driver portion of this PCB is connected to its own bench power supply so we can adjust the voltage up and down and therefore control the amount of current going through this resistor and consequently through our MOSFET stage. The actual logic on here is powered from its own power supply from the main board and then from a separate bench power supply so uh, adjusting the voltage here won't change anything else on the circuit. Um, so let's have a look at some of the waveforms. So uh, we've got our PWM input here, this is directly from the microcontroller here so if I probe that point on the PCB you can see we're getting in blue a nice square wave. Now also one thing to bear in mind is uh, I'm using the long ground leads on the scope probe so we might see a bit of ringing on the fast edges um, but as you can see at the bottom here the frequency is 200 hertz due to cycle about 10.1 percent. Then if we look at the next stage in the circuit so the output of this inverter we should see an inversion from that blue signal so if I probe the output here we get a nice square wave exactly mirroring the blue waveform so that all looks good. Uh, the next thing we've got is uh, this node here. So let's have a look at the base of the open collector transistor. And you can see here it's basically clamped at about 0 0.7 volts, going down to 0 volts when we want that transistor to turn off. So that looks good. And then I just need to change the scale here. Right, so for channel 2 on the PicoScope now we need to be looking at this axis for the voltage. I've also put a measurement here looking at the maximum because at this point this is where we're doing our level shifting. So we've gone from our inverted 3.3 volts and we're now level shifting up to 12 volts but with a weak pull up. So let's have a look at this node here. And as you can see we've got a good clean waveform in red there peaking at 12.46 volts or so. So that's doing its job. Now the problem that we had with this as a gate driver is that this weak pull-up probably doesn't have enough drive strength to drive this MOSFET quickly. So that's why we've got our gate driver here. So let's take a look at the output here, which should look exactly the same. It's just that we've got more drive capability. So we'll have a look at that. And yeah, exactly the same, about 12 volts, very slightly lower and that's because these transistors here do have a little bit of a voltage drop across them um, so we're seeing it about 0 0.6 volts lower than the waveform going in. So that all looks good. Now let's have a look at the output just here and again we've got an inversion happening because we're switching the negative side. So let's stick the probe in channel 1 and again a nice clean waveform. This has got about 600 milliamps going through it so what we want to do now is increase the power through that resistor. So we're going to increase the voltage and have a look at some higher currents and see if the waveforms remain the same. Uh, but actually just before we do that let's have a look at the transition. So we'll just zoom in a bit closer and just see what the edges are looking like. So once again this is our output and there's just a very short delay there. Uh, probably just a couple of microseconds delay but a very hard sharp edge so everything's looking good there. So this is 2 amps and the waveform again perfectly sharp edge let's look at the gate waveform going into it and yeah still exactly the same and we'll just increase it all the way up to 4 amps which is the highest that I designed it for. So this is it, probably about the maximum it'll ever see. 
and still very, very sharp transitions. And that's what we want. We want a really fast turn on and off so that the MOSFETs are not spending much time in their more resistive regions. Let's quickly look at the thermal image and just see if this transistor is getting hot. So we've got the thermal camera attached to my mobile phone. And as you can see, that thermal camera is working quite nicely. It's really smooth, actually. It's got a very fast refresh rate. Um, so we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a future video. Uh, but here is our MOSFET driver board. And as you can see, the MOSFETs are not getting warm. This, where the crosshair is now reading 30.8, is the first MOSFET that's driving uh, this resistor over here. But it is no warmer in temperature compared to the MOSFET underneath it, which is completely unloaded. So it looks like the gate driver is doing exactly what we want it to do. It is causing the MOSFET to stay uh, either in the off situation or with its best on resistance when it's turned on and spending very little time in that transition between those two states, which is normally where we get all of the power dissipation. Now, obviously, we're running this at a fairly low frequency, 200 hertz. Uh, so there's not that many of those transitions occurring, but it's quite surprising to see that we've got such a low operating temperature. So it looks like that gate driver is doing exactly what we want it to do, uh, but it does pose the question, do we need that gate driver or is there another way that we can drive it without using uh, some of those more expensive parts? So what I've done is I've actually redesigned the circuit slightly to eliminate the gate driver and just use a NPN transistor. So what we've got here is a common base amplifier which has voltage gain but no current gain. So all of our drive current for the MOSFET has to come from the signal that's feeding it. So that's why we've got a buffer here as one option and another option is to just, just to drive it directly from the microcontroller so we can put these zero ohm links in as we need to test out the two concepts. Now the common base amplifier might look a bit strange because you'll notice the base is permanently tied to the 3.3 volt rail but what's actually happening here is if you can imagine to turn this transistor on we need the emitter to be 0.7 volts less than the base or more basically. Um, so what happens is when our input signal is 3.3 volts this transistor is turned off so our uh, voltage here comes through this 2k2 resistor so we're basically getting our 12 volt signal into the MOSFET gate. When we deliver a zero volts into the emitter then the transistor turns on and it pulls this node low and we're getting all our zero volt current through this node here. So that's the way it's going to work. I've ordered some PCBs from PCBWay and we'll do a video very shortly and compare the circuit and see if we still get um, you know, good performance at high loads from these MOSFETs or whether those gate drivers are actually doing a lot of work for us. Because to a lot of people all of this electronics looks a little bit complicated and what they would normally design is just a low side driver with some MOSFETs where the gate is being driven directly by a microcontroller output. So what I want to do with this new board, uh, which will be here very shortly, is just explore the various configurations and see what benefits we get from each one. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any thoughts or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to visit PCBWay where you can get some awesome PCBs like this manufactured. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are really helping keep this channel going. And until next time, thanks for watching.